Hello and welcome back to Vintage Story. We're going to be accomplishing very little today, if I'm being, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, today's theme is all about housework. Well, see, now that's a, that's a pun, you see, because when I say housework, you think like, oh, chores, like uh, watering the garden, which is a necessary evil, of course. Uh, well, it's it's a necessary good. I, I'd like to. Th think that watering your garden is a, is a good thing. Uh, no, but it also means I'm going to be working on the house, uh, going to be improving things slightly here and there. But we are also going to be doing quite a lot of, uh, you know, just kind of medial tasks and chores. But, you know, these things happen and I kind of want to, um, you know, uh, keep track of that. This is, it almost becomes like a, um, you know, a, a daily journal kind of thing to, to, uh, keep track of, of the small progress I make here and there. But um, regardless of my small progress, I do attempt to make some large progress here by exploring the world, continuing to uh, put my feelers out into the different, uh, you know, different directions around my house uh, in, the, in the attempts to find a biome that I may not may have missed, may not have seen before as well as uh, find some necessary resources like tin. We're going to be looking for tin for quite a long time. But in the meantime, hey, look, oak, oak wood. Um, as I mentioned in the last episode, oak is going to be very important and necessary for the production of leather. And um, it's going to be super necessary for us to get quite a lot of it. And um, so this, this small patch of oak was a nice find. I didn't pull up all of it because I don't necessarily need all of it right away, but um, oak is, is hard to cut down. It, you get quite a lot of it in one tree, but the, the oak um, t took two uh, two axes to actually get through it. And it, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's a hardy wood, right? You could call it a hardwood, in fact. Uh, it, that's, that's a joke. That's a tree joke for you. Um... So along with needing wood for tanning leather, uh, and you can see I'm, I'm throwing some oak in here and trying to figure it out. You know, learning everything in Vintage Story is, is almost like the tagline for my series now. Everything in Vintage Story is a process, including learning. Um, and so I have to figure out exactly how much oak I need and how much water I need to fill a barrel and, and start that process going. And it takes 24 hours to make the water uh, turn into tannin um, and I find out later that it only turns into weak tannin and you do need both weak and strong tannin so that's a, another thing I have to learn everything in vintage story is a process including learning <laughs> and uh, anyway, when you have to learn things step by step then it slows down you know the process a little bit but uh, I wouldn't change it that's what I like about vintage story I really appreciate that about it so um, we're going to be doing some metal working because I need to replace um, some tools and maybe get some new tools. Uh, I've been kind of taking the accumulation of copper for granted and my collection of copper for granted. And you can see I'm burning through it at an alarming rate. So, um, but nonetheless, I decide I'm going to um, make a few tools as well as, uh, you know, fill our molds, you know, our ingot molds. Um, and I think I have a good number. I think that uh, six or seven of them is about the perfect number of ingot molds so that, you know, like you can you can get through a batch of, of ingots, smelt them down, doesn't cost you um, a ridiculous amount of charcoal, and you'll have enough ingots that you can make a few tools for the next few days without worrying about uh, burning through your entire batch or collection so it's I think that's a good amount and I don't feel like you know like I feel like I have a comfortable uh, buffer of ingots without worrying uh, whenever I make tools or whenever I need to make a tool so I've kind of got this whole smithing smelting metalworking thing you know down it, it, it's it's in a good place but nonetheless we're gonna go through the steps um, you know and softening up our copper ingots so that we can start working on them. I forget what I'm what I make here, what I need to make, but I think at this point I may uh, actually come to the understanding that I don't actually have to 
um, do mold, use molds anymore to make my tools. Um, and in fact, you can just do smithing with ingots in order to make tools. So that uh, makes this whole process a bit more streamlined and efficient. I basically only have to do smelting for making ingots, and then I can use the ingots to um, make whatever I need. So we do make a second lantern here. Uh, that's that's actually going to be like one of our first luxury items. Uh, lanterns are really quite expensive. They're very resource heavy since they require two ingots, basically 200 units of copper or whatever uh, metal you plan on using to make them. In order to make one lantern, um, that's that's kind of absurd. That's a lot of resources just for a light source. But, um, you know, I would argue that it is pretty worth it. The lantern is one of the best sort of light sources in the game. And um, especially when you place it, like, never mind holding it. It's it's a really nice source of light. When you place it, man, it's it's just so nice. It, it floods the room with uh, with the light. And, and that's a really... That's, that just like cuts a lot of time, um, you know, like in a, in a way uh, it's actually more efficient and, and less resource heavy than, for instance, if you were to make a bunch of oil lamps because those would uh, absolutely soak up your um, fat resources and, uh, and provide less light ultimately. So the lantern is worth it. So here we are again. Um, this episode, I believe, uh, I unfortunately lost a bit of time because uh, I was trying to figure out the command for um, getting the secret second feature of the prospector's pick to work and at a certain point um, I finally figured out oh I did enable it but I have to restart the game or maybe I tried to restart the game and uh, just to try and make it work and then I basically OBS was not capturing uh, anymore the uh, vintage story so that was unfortunate and we lost about an hour of playtime um, so that that sucks but I don't think you missed all that much I think I, maybe I smithed a couple of new tools including a copper shovel and that was maybe the most exciting thing really really groundbreaking stuff there that's another that's another joke there by the way because it because it was a shovel see and it was a it's groundbreaking. See? Um, oh, wow. That drift, that second drifter really kind of caught me off guard there. Um, getting a bit more bold in this game. I've been doing more and more uh, exploration at night because um, it doesn't really matter too much. Uh, you can kind of just run through the fields and um, as long as you keep moving, you don't have to worry too much about what's spawning. And, uh, you know, if you're just doing like, like quick kind of exploratory, like, oh, there's a, there's a resource here I can grab real quick, uh, or there's a, you know, cave over here I can prospect real quick. It doesn't matter. Definitely the most dangerous thing will be the, the wolves as per usual, but, uh, that, you know, not, not much has changed there in that aspect. So here we are, um turning our weak tannin into strong tannin and turning another batch of water into weak tannin. Like I said, you need both because you need to cure um, your scraped leather into uh, weakly tanned leather, I think it is, and then you have to cure the weakly tanned leather into strongly tanned, and then it became becomes basically a leather scrap, a generic leather scrap that you can use to make whatever you need to make. So we're doing some more smithing. I can't, again, I can't remember what I make here. I made a lantern and I'm also kind of reorganizing things. Um, you know, like I say, as as things um, develop, as I figure out my workflow, uh, I'll better understand how I should organize my uh, setup so that it's a bit more efficient as well as maybe a bit more aesthetic. Um, but it's, you know, it is what it is for now. Um, doing some more smelting. Still haven't figured out. This might be the uh, eureka moment where I figure out that uh, smithing is, uh, or metalworking is actually better for making tools than smelting. Um, I did have a comment tell me that it's better to kind of figure out how many units of copper you actually need before you start smelting because then you don't have to 
leave copper in a in a crucible and then like re-melt it down later. I've been kind of trying to take that into consideration. When I first read it, I was like, well, that's absurd. I, I'm not going to do math. Uh, and then I realized, well, I guess since the copper ingots are only five units each, then I could just put in, um, you know, units of 100 because everything requires 100 units of copper. And since I'm only making ingots anyway, I may as well put in, um, you know, enough, like a multiple of 1,000 units anyway. Uh, I keep ending up with this odd extra ingot in the end. So I don't think it really matters because uh, unless I have like just a little bit extra that ends up in another ingot, I don't have to re-smelt that down. So it just becomes kind of like the collection for odd amounts of uh, <laughs> copper. The only reason I had an odd amount of copper in the first place is because I had a half filled ingot mold so you know it's kind of a vicious cycle and um here it is here's the eureka moment i finally figure out i can make a pickaxe by metalworking in any case um eventually the that uh extra ingot mold with a tiny bit of copper in it um accidentally gets destroyed and they may, i think that's in the next episode you'll you'll see how that happens but uh, the the problem solves itself as it was as it were, um, and we don't have to worry <laughs> anymore about well you know, you're gonna smelt an uneven amount of copper and then you know not have enough or have too much and then you're gonna have to re uh, I mean like I think I think maybe life is too short to worry about those things because I'm already not doing a good job at other things to then figure out how I could be doing. Uh, smelting and, and metal working more efficiently but you know I, I guess I figure out a, a efficient way to be lazy about it so uh, you know it does ultimately save me time that's not me ripping on that comment that's just me letting you know how lazy I am about these kind of things or maybe just my brain isn't good at you know trying to optimize it's it's more uh I don't know, task oriented, like at the given moment, at any given moment, I, I'll be thinking about, well, what do I want to do right now? As opposed to what should I be doing right now? Maybe that's more common than I think, but in any case, finally decide to give our seller a proper staircase that goes down. This is going to be uh, something I kind of refine and uh, maybe also uh, pretty up in the next couple of episodes, but uh, it's something I wanted to do. Like I say, I don't want our, I don't want my cottage looking like a warehouse. I want it ultimately to look like a cottage and feel like something that someone would live in, and and not just like a big box with a bunch of stuff in it. I guess you could call that a house, but uh, you know, I think there's a difference between um, a big house with, or a big box with stuff in it and, and a house. You know, a place that somewhere someone lives in. Decide to um, kind of get the ball rolling on making shingles. I've been d dabbling here and there in making, uh, getting this process started and also trying to figure out the most efficient way to uh, clay form the shingles because it is a bit of a pain to uh, make them all. And I have, I think, figured out the best way for making shingles. Um, so I don't know if that's in this episode, might be in the next one, but either way. Um, I'm I, I don't have an idea or a number in mind of how many shingles I need. I'm just making as many as I, you know, like making it in my off time at nighttime or during temporal storms, whenever I have some off time, I'm like, yeah, better make some shingles because uh, I'm going to need a lot of them because it's a big house and, uh, you know, I need, going to need a large amount of, uh, of roof, so... Uh, you saw there a rare drop from a drifter. I got a, a rusty gear from one of them, which is the going currency for in Vintage Story. I don't really understand why, but I, I, I'm not complaining. Um, I, I, I kind of like that there is a currency in this game. I guess there is one in Minecraft as well, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I do end up spending that. I, I, I don't hold on to currency for very long because... 
there isn't really a lot of stuff I want. A lot of the stuff you can buy from villagers is mostly decorative, but um, I do have a clothing merchant that I've been trading with uh, off, you know, off and on again that uh, is trading me warmer gear, which has been nice. I still don't have uh, warm enough gear that I can kind of like not freeze, but it's good enough um, to, to kind of slow the process down. So that's that's nice. So here I am finally getting started on something that I want to have done basically by the springtime, which is a greenhouse. I know that it would be nice to have a greenhouse during the winter time, but that's just not going to happen. Um, and it, even if I did have it, you know, finished before spring, it's not going to pay off until probably spring or summer. Um, but uh, the greenhouse, that's going to be an ongoing process. And like every anything else in this game, it's going to take a long time to get it going. And I've um, gotten, I've, I've been pretty ambitious with this greenhouse project, but I plan to kind of make it modular. So like you can see, I'm carving out this big rectangle um, with it in mind to uh, you know make a greenhouse out of it but that's not going to be one big greenhouse and it, in fact it can't be one big greenhouse because a greenhouse uh, like a cellar can only be seven by seven interior um, so I'm going to have to split it up into multiple greenhouses but this kind of works to my benefit because it means that I can um, basically make a corner part of the greenhouse and then add on to it later. So I can basically make up the walls and a greenhouse only needs to have like one bit of glass in the roof in order to be considered a greenhouse. And so I can I can make one chunk of the greenhouse and it is considered officially a greenhouse. And um and then, you know, like I have I have a greenhouse and then I can basically add on to it later and add another chunk when I need some more. And I will, like I have so much seeds now currently, um, just from like breaking crops that I've been noticing. The crops are a lot easier to notice uh, when, you know, in winter time, here's our lost hour, by the way. The crops are a lot easier to notice in winter time because they stay green, but everything else turns white and gray. And uh, so they're really, really easy to notice. So um, yeah, at a certain point I ended up in a big, hole and there's some I'm quite deep at this point uh, and I find some saltpeter. Saltpeter is going to be very helpful for getting our greenhouse started because it is a, a natural fertilizer. Uh, it fertilizes in a different direction so uh, basically bone meal fertilizes uh, in one direction and I could tell you the exact uh, ingredients it adds to soil but I forget I'm sorry and then saltpeter basically is like the icing on top. It adds the other necessary ingredients and nutrients to the soil to uh, really enrich in it and make your crops grow very quickly and uh, happily. But anyway, I have started to co collect, like I keep dirt basically on me now, like just normal dirt. I think I'm about to die here. Is this when I die? I had in the quartz. No, never mind. I think that was maybe the previous episode. Um, but I, uh, I, I keep some dirt on me so that if I ever get any stone that I don't plan on using for any construction purposes, then I just combine it with the dirt and then that makes dirt path. Regardless of what kind of stone you use, uh, it'll make dirt path and it actually ends up saving you some inventory space because you can just, you know, combine it. You don't end up with a bunch of stones, but you do end up using the stones towards some kind of purpose, which is nice. Uh, nothing goes to waste and the dirt paths are actually quite useful, but we'll get to that later, much later. It's another luxury that I am, I, I, t I plan on taking advantage of, but it's not uh, super necessary. So here I am uh, trying uh, once again to make use of the chisel and also to make my home just feel a little bit more, I don't know, homely. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to basically carve this uh, entranceway into the cellar so that it has kind of a, a, a maple trim, um, which I liked. I also played with the idea of uh, making it not necessarily a trim. This was funny. The game crashed like right, right there. There it is, crash. And then I had to redo some stuff. But oh, and then and then when I spawned back in, dwellers were inside my house, which was weird. Yeah, I played with the idea of like giving 
it not necessarily a wood wall but this kind of wooden frame but I thought it looked a bit too mine shafty and I, that's not really the look I'm going for so I ended up just filling it in but I'm interested to hear what you think like what what do you prefer um, do you like the wooden frame or do you like like the wooden uh, walled look either way I think it, it looks nicer than nothing and then I also um, plan on putting the staircases in because uh, you know like as I'm filling in the house I, I need to plan around certain necessary things like a staircase to the next floor so anyway that's the end um i hope you enjoyed it if you did hit that like button and consider subscribing if you're new to my content see you guys next time for some more vintage story take it easy